Hey nerds, Amy here, and today we are going to learn how to create a pivot table in Excel. If you would like to follow along, then I've included a link in the comments below. Um, before we dive into all of that good stuff, we are first going to need to prepare our data, and this just helps set us up for success when we go into the pivot table analysis. I have a ton of cool tips that I'm going to show you along the way that will streamline this process and make you a pivot table pro. So with that being said, let's nerd out. At Amy's Animal Barn and Petco, we have this raw data for Q4 sales, and we are going to create a pivot table to analyze this data. The first thing that I always do before I manipulate any data is duplicate this tab. So I'm going to right click it, and we are going to select move or copy, create a copy, and we're just going to create it right here. And I'm just going to quickly rename it appropriately. Now that we have our sheet ready, the first thing that we are going to do is prepare our data. Part one of three in cleaning our data is formatting the cells. So in this example, we have a date column, and we are just going to need to ensure that that is in fact stored as a date value. Some other things that you can look out for in formatting is if any of your cells have leading or trailing spaces, those are also going to need to be corrected. Here we have a date and I can see up at the top that this is stored as a date value. I do also just like to run this formula just to, you know, triple ensure that that is going to be okay. So that is returning a false value, meaning that it is not stored as a text. I'm confident that we can move forward with that date column. If yours is not stored as a date, then you are going to need to correct it and convert it to a date column. The next part of cleaning our data is to ensure that we have accurate data. There are a few components involved in this, and the first one is removing duplicate values. So as you can see here, we do have a duplicate value within this table. And you know what? There might be others. So in order to quickly remove those, we'll just select a cell within inside our data set and then control A, and this is going to select all of the values in our table. And then we are going to go Alt A M, remove duplicate values. So here we have the duplicate value window pop up. I am quite happy with these defaults, so we are just going to select OK. Now we can see that one duplicate value was found. Now we have removed that duplicate value. And as you can see, it is not there. The next part of cleaning our data and ensuring that it's accurate is to run a quick spell check to ensure that there are no spelling mistakes. What we can do is just go Alt R S, run the spell checker. And yes, we want to start at the beginning of the sheet and it's already saying that our spell check is complete. But you just wanna ensure that there is integrity within your data so that all of the you know, words are matching each other and there's no anomalies that are gonna skew your data. And the third component in having accurate data is ensuring that your headers are appropriate. So when we create the pivot table, these are going to guide us in organizing the data. So I'm going to quickly rename all of these to give them an appropriate title so that I know exactly what they are when we create the pivot table. The last component in ensuring that our data is accurate is updating any blank cells. So here I can see that this cell is blank, but a quick way to do this is to go Alt H F D for find and select and then S for special. And from here we can select blanks and now we click OK. This is going to select all of the blank cells. So as we can see here, that is selecting the cell that I've already highlighted and we are just going to update that to the Christmas category as it is a Christmas sweater. All right, the last piece of preparing our data is to create a table and this is just going to make our formatting um, ideal for a pivot table and it is also going to make our data more dynamic. So if we do add rows or columns and the data is going to automatically update. So if we go Alt N P, then we can automatically select all of the data and this create table window is going to pop up and we are just going to accept the default. Okay, now the fun and juicy stuff comes. Now we are going to insert a pivot table and it's going to get super fun. Okay, so if we click within our data, we can head up on into the insert tab 
and select pivot table. Or what you can do is head on over to this analyze your data little button here on the home tab and let's see what pops up. So here we've already got a couple of suggested questions as well as a pivot table option. So why don't we insert this pivot table and see what AI generates for us. This is okay. Um, it does automatically pop everything into categories, but it's not quite what I was looking for as we want to compare the sales between the different months for that period. Don't worry, folks, you're still smarter than AI. Let's check out how we can manipulate this pivot table. So if we click in the pivot table, then this brings up the pivot table field. And I am just going to reorder that so that it is easier for you to see. We've got these defaults here. So this filters area up here is where we can do a higher filter for the pivot table. So let's say that we drag the category up into that filters area, then we can see that the category is at the top here. So if we want to, for example, filter for just Christmas items, then we can select OK, and then that is just going to sum the total of the Christmas items. So generally speaking, the row field is for non-numeric values. So in this example, we have products that have gone there by default, and that is a non-numeric value. Um, I'm going to leave that there for now. And in columns, we don't have anything yet. And columns are generally where you are going to put um, time hierarchies. So why don't we select the date at the top here and see where that goes. So just by clicking on that, it has done a couple of things here. So it has already um, grouped these. So and it's also popped them into the rows area, which is just creating a bit of a confusing pivot table. So if we just um, remove this field and remove that field as well, then I'm going to take the date and drag it into the columns. And so that's looking a little bit better. Uh, however, I, what I would like to do is group these dates into something that is going to be helpful. So we had um, the last quarter of sales. So why don't we see if we can group these by month? So if we just click on any of these date figures and right click, then we can head on down to group. And if we just deselect days, then we can select months. So depending on the data that you have, you could group it into quarters or even years. I am going to select this. Look at that. So now this is definitely more of a report that you could hand over to, you know, um, higher up management or present in a meeting because it has nicely categorized our Christmas products by month so that we can compare sales and see which month leading up to Christmas had the most sales. Now I want to head on over to this values field. And so this is for numeric values. So here we have by default, the sum of the total sales. Now we can also just change that um, to quantity if we wanted to see the quantity of products sold. And if we wanted to analyze this data even further or change the format of the value, then we can right click. And if we go summarize values by, then we could even change it to count average. We've got a couple of options here. Let's change it to count and see what that looks like. So here we have the count of sales within each of these products by the different months. So I'm going to change this back to sum. For the purpose of this video, I'm also going to change it to sales and just remove the quantity. So now that we have the sum of the total sales, it isn't really clear that these are dollar figures. So if we right click, then we can number format and we can make this um, an accounting. So by default, it's going to show that uh, dollar sign symbol as well as the decimal places. There are also a few more formatting options here. So we can also show the values as a percentage of grand total. So if we wanted to see, you know, what percentage of our sales were accounted for in October, that is only 27%. So as we can see right away, December had the highest percentage of total sales. Come. Yes. Good girl.
Now we can even filter this further. So right now we are showing month by month by month, but we can further filter the dates as well. So we can, you know, deselect all of these and then just select December if we just wanted to look at the sales for December. And by updating that filter, we can also see that this has now automatically defaulted um, to update this percentage to this month, uh, which is the total, but it's going to skew your data based on the filters that you have. So that is a great feature of pivot tables as it does a lot of the work for you. Now let's say that we want to see how all of our products and categories compare by month for this period. So we select this filter here so we can just clear the filters from that. And we are also going to just clear this category. So this is going to be all of our product sales by percentage. I am just going to quickly change this back to no calculation. So now we have the sum of the total sales by product. But this is a lot of data to consume. This is in alphabetical order, but I do want to add the categories to it. So if we select the categories, it's going to default to the rows area. And this is just not that um, pleasing to the eye. It's a bit difficult to navigate. So if we drag this above the product, then that puts it into more of a digestible uh, table that we can you know, easily analyze. So here we have accessories, we have the products, and then we have the different months as well as the accessories total and the grand total as well as a grand total for everything at the bottom all by default, this legwork is done for you. There are a few more sort options here. So if we select these little carrots, then we can see that we can sort this by A to Z or Z to A, um, as well as some filters. But what we want to do is actually have Christmas at the top. So we want to highlight the Christmas sales, but still have everything else. So if we right click Christmas, then we can move this to the beginning. So now this is going to show Christmas at the top, which is perfect. And then all of our other categories as well as products within those categories are showing below. Now the last thing that we want to do is we want to highlight these top three products via conditional formatting. But when I select all of this data, I'm going to have these totals as well as these totals and this grand total at the bottom, it's going to be skewing my data. So if we right click in this column and we're going to see this subtotal category. So if we remove the subtotal category, then that is going to further consolidate our data. And if we just control A, select everything, hold control, then we can deselect the grand total uh, column and row. And now we have just the product totals selected. And if we go up to conditional formatting, then we can select the top 10 items. So here we have now a really nice visual representation of the top 10 products sold during the last quarter with Christmas being highlighted at the top as that is the primary season and a category that we want to pay special attention to in this pivot table analysis. All right, so that wraps up this video and I do hope that I've helped you discover your inner nerd today. And I also hope that I've shown you how to master pivot tables and be a pro when analyzing data. Thanks for nerding out with me. We'll see you again.